Hi, I'm Diva Pagan. I'm the author of Rival Magic, a middle grade fantasy adventure about Antonia and Mop, who are wizard apprentices who have to work together in spite of their rivalry. In my book, uh, there's a lot of magic. So I thought that today you folks and I could talk about casting spells, not real spells, sorry. I can't actually teach you how to turn yourself into a dolphin or make a turnip dance like Antonia and Mop, but um, we're gonna talk about something that does give you power. So in my book, the magic is based on words and languages. I'm not the first writer who's used magic that's based on words like this, it's uh, pretty, common actually and I think the reason for that is because we especially writers uh, and readers know that words are really powerful. In Rival Magic the characters learn their magic words from books that are full of magic words that are called grimoires. Um, it's a fun word to say isn't it? Grimoire. Anyways the uh, real world equivalent I might say are things like dictionaries which are lists of words with their meanings and also this thing, a thesaurus. So you might have one of these in your house. If you don't, there are websites, thesaurus.com. You can ask an adult to help you find that if you wanna uh, look words up. And what a thesaurus lets you do is look up a word and find other words that mean the same thing. So let's try it. I'm gonna look up magic. So there's a big list of words, you probably can't see it, but I'll just read it for you. So for magic, some of the other words are sorcery, sortilage, wizardry, grammary, witchcraft, spellcasting, enchantment, charm, and alchemy. And there's even more, but I'm gonna stop there. So we can use these thesaurus, thesauruses, to help us find other words when we're trying to say things. Um, which is kind of like finding the right words for a magic spell. So let's try it. So think of something you want to say. Maybe you want to tell your parents how you're feeling. Maybe you want to say how much you love your dog, or maybe you want to turn a carrot into delicious candy. So that might not really work, but let's give it a try. Turn this carrot into delicious candy. So we're going to come up with a new way to say that using synonyms. Um, so first, what are some other ways you could say turn? If you have any in mind, think about them, write them down. Um, if you have a thesaurus, look it up. Um, so what I found when I looked at my thesaurus was transform, transfigure, and change, among other things. So let's use transform. It's a little harder to find a synonym for carrot uh, as you know, a single word that means carrot, but what we can do instead is come up with a different way to describe it using a set of words. So for example, you might say orange root vegetable. We'll try it. Then for tasty, I found a bunch of different options. There was delectable, delicious, toothsome, and luscious. So let's use delicious. And then finally candy. We could use sweet meat or we could use confection. So I will use confection. So let's put it all together and see what happens. Transform this orange root vegetable into a delicious confection. Chocolate. So there you have it. I don't guarantee you can actually change carrots into candy in real life, but I hope you will try exploring the world of synonyms and words and finding all of the power you can claim from knowing the words that you need to express what's inside you to the world. And um, so try thinking of some things that you want to say, some feelings you have inside of you, and look them up in a thesaurus, look up some words and try and find the perfect word to cast your own spell. So I wanted to finish up by reading a little bit from Rival Magic. This is um, from the first chapter where Antonia is practicing uh, a spell that she needs to cast for her teacher the next day and she's not very good at it. So she is uh, sneaking out of bed, staying up late and is in the kitchen trying to practice it where no one can see her because um, she's not doing very well. 
and she doesn't want an audience. Unfortunately, uh, she didn't realize that there's a new scholar maid, Mop, who is in the kitchen and uh, spotted her doing this and is now watching her and making her even more nervous. Um, so that's where our uh, scene here begins. So, even with my back turned, I could feel the girl's eyes on me. A flutter of nerves filled my belly. The whole point of practicing in the kitchen was to not have an audience. But I couldn't let Mop rattle me. I had to focus. Returning, I propped my new turnip on the table and intoned the spell once more. Turnip. Animate. Dance. The turnip twitched. It began to roll back and forth, like a turtle tipped on its back. Only a very charitable person would have called it dancing. I snatched the thing up, ready to toss it into the fire to join its brethren. Mop arched her brows. Are you sure you're saying the right words? If you think it's so easy, maybe you should try it, I snorted. Barely one in a thousand people were born with the ability to understand mage speak, let alone cast magic. Surely no untrained scullery maid could ever... Turn it! Enemy! Dance! said Mop. The purple root in my hand twitched, wriggling like a captive beetle. Startled, I let it fall. It jigged gracefully off across the worn kitchen floor. Ooh, it worked! Mop clapped her hands together, looking delighted. My insides crumpled in shock. I'd been struggling for hours, days, and now some kitchen girl marches in and casts it perfectly her first time? Was this a joke? A trick of some sort? With a loud thump, one of the storage crates suddenly tipped over, loosing a tide of purple roots. Dozens of turnips scattered across the kitchen floor, some the size of my thumb, others as large as my head. And all of them were dancing. All of them. Mop gave a stifled shriek. The turnips were getting wilder, bounding and spinning and leaping dangerously high. I yelped as one large root smacked into my chest. More hard blows battered my arms as I flung them over my face. Desperately, I scrambled up onto the table. Mop tried to follow, only to trip over a shimmying turnip and crash to the floor. Stop, she shrieked. Stop. I take it back. You need to use mage speak, I shouted. The word for deanimate is oomph. Oomph was not, in fact, the mage speak word for deanimate. It was the noise I made when a leaping turnip smacked into my mouth. But Mop was already shouting, Oomph! Oomph! Can't you hear me, you nasty things? Oomph! I yanked the rooty legs of the turnip that was trying to gag me. It squirmed, resisting my hold. Thumps and bumps battered the air, followed by the tinkling crunch that sounded distressingly like fine china being smashed to bits. I gave up tugging and bit down instead. The turnip gave a satisfying crunch, going limp. I spat it out. One down. Only about a hundred more to go. Below me, Mop shrieked, huddling as a wave of prancing turnips bounced onto her, pelting her spine. Turnips! Deanimate! I cried in mage speak, but it did nothing. I flung myself down along the edge of the sturdy table, reaching for one of Mop's filling hands. Here, get up on the table! Her fingers tightened on mine as I tugged her free of the turnips. She collapsed beside me a moment later, breathless and glassy-eyed. Watch out, I called, as a particularly large turnip bounded onto the table. Rudy feet tapping an ominous tarantella as it advanced towards us. I seized the horrid thing in both hands and was about to toss it onto the hearth when a voice thundered a single phrase in mage speak. Turnips, deanimate. There was a sound like brief hard rain as every single turnip fell to the floor. Slowly, painfully, I dropped the now limp turnip and surveyed the damage. An entire cabinet of the best china had somehow ended up on the floor smashed to creamy, flower-spattered shards. The butter crock was upended, and trails of gold were streaked across the countertops, leading to inert bodies of several well-oiled turnips. More turnips lay in dark pools of vinegar near the pantry. Others were strewn across the floor, across the pantry shelves, poking out of pies and loaves of bread. Three of the purple roots had even managed to lodge themselves in the twisted iron ring of the lamp above. At the far end of the kitchen stood Master Beatrice. Clearly, she just arrived home from the dinner party. She still wore her long velvet dress cloak embroidered with stars and moons. It rippled around her as she paced forward. Her brown face was intent as she scanned the room, missing nothing. Master Beatrice was the most impressive person I knew, even more impressive than my mother, and that was saying a lot. So impressive that I did not have even the tiniest urge to laugh when I noticed the small turnip dangling from her ear. Mop, on the other hand, let out a high-pitched giggle. Beatrice lifted one hand, gloved in midnight blue leather, to flick the offending vegetable away. 
Then she looked at me. Antonia, explain. So that is the end of the excerpt. And if you want to learn how Antonia does explain herself, or try to, uh, you can find the answer in Rival Magic. And um, just I wish you luck in going out there now and exploring your thesaurus or um, dictionaries or just looking at whatever words you can find in the books that you're reading and just gather up as many of those magical words as you can and use them to cast your own spells. Bye!